You want to do that? You do it, cause okay. I don't like doing that. We'll put, we'll put um, Ruben or Braulio. We'll put you in there, Braulio. Okay. You're, you're going to do segment two, three or four. Three and four, yeah. Hey guys, welcome to KSB Radio, the voice of town view. I'm Mari, and I'm here with my co-host. It's your boy, Bread and Water. I'm Breezy. And we have a special guest. Would you mind introducing yourself? Hi, I'm Ale. So, we have a very prideful episode today. So, uh, Dallas Pride just happened this weekend. Did any of you guys attend it? Yeah, it was great. I had a great time. I, I didn't go. I wasn't there either. So, um, many people always ask, like, why do we celebrate Pride? So, um, I'll just like to give a little summary about it. So, in, in the 90s, I would say, or 90s, so the Stonewall Riot in New York happened, where a nightclub was being um, prosecuted by police all the time for just celebrating who they are, and they decided to fight back and start a riot, which open the uh, gay liberation movement. So, um, do you guys think it's appropriate to, to go to Pride or have Pride events? I think it is. I think it's really important that people celebrate who they are and that, you know, it's important so that people feel accepted in their community and, and you know, in the state of Texas it's a lot harder to celebrate yourself, but like with Pride it's a little easier. Mm -hmm. I think that it's a right that's you know good to have for the people that are supportive of the LGBTQ plus community. I personally wouldn't attend because I'm not exactly on board, but I'm not against it. Um, but I do think that it's okay, that it's really good that those events are out there because you know it's it's a right that people should have to be able to express themselves. I think it's more like a like a cultural thing. Like you have, like for instance, Hispanic celebrations or African American celebrations, and you know having this thing such as like Pride, I think it's a good way for the LGBT community to express themselves. Mm -hmm. Although, yeah, sometimes you know they can get a little in your face, and I and I feel like that's maybe sort of the point. Like I used to, you know, I I lived in an area where you know, like right next to the. Uh, the LGBTQ community, like the neighborhood, and um, you know, it was it was always like a little in your face. And my mom was really, really well. She is like super religious, and she never necessarily approves of it all the time. And that's sort of why, you know, I think it's a good sort of thing. But I just feel like maybe it's a little too, you know, in your face at times. Yeah, um, yeah, <clears throat> I could see that. Um, so that being said, you think it's uh, appropriate for the youth to go? You think it's uh, safe. I wouldn't say that it's not safe. Um, that's a hard question. 
Yeah, um, I, I feel like it just really depends on the person and how open they are about expressing that side of, of them. Like some people are still like open about the LGBT, about being gay or, or something like that. But I feel like it just, it's a personal um, decision. Mm -hmm. There are people that aren't going to feel comfortable being there even if they do support it or even if they are part of that community. And there are people who aren't part of that community but are like allies. So are going to go so it's just really like up to the person mm -hmm. yeah I agree I think it's um, I think it's important that they feel like they have that safety to go mm -hmm. um, I know like it can be like it's big crowds so it might seem a little dangerous there is police in every single corner making sure like the parade is going correctly and everybody's safe and you know people have water and they're you know not dehydrated or anything like that so I think it is a safe environment um, culturally and like um, safety-wise and health and all these things, it's really safe. I think it's based more on like maturity. Like mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, being in such a in such a um, celebration, you have to like know how to like go through it, and especially if you're you know mature enough to like understand why you're celebrating what you're celebrating, why you're celebrating you know the celebration of being either gay, straight, gay or lesbian or bisexual or transgender. And you know, some people don't understand that yet, and that's why some people still don't attend. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, yeah, the safety reasons are probably, we all agree that it's a safe place. It's more so the way people dress and the way it's being perceived, that being semi-nude or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Do you guys think it's appropriate and used to be exposed to that, you know, like in the parade and stuff? I think it depends on how old they are and how they have been raised, because some people are raised to not like sexualize bodies or like, you know, they're just wearing what they're wearing. Mm -hmm. But um, for like younger kids, it might be a little too much for them. Yeah. But they, that's why um, earlier in the weekend, like on Saturday or Friday, they have a family pride festival that mm -hmm. they can go to so that it's a safer environment for them to attend. And like the pride parade is, you know, it's easier for like older kids or young adults to participate. And, no, well, um, so uh, we've had multiple Pride Festivals, and this is the 35th year of the Pride Festival in Dallas. Do you think uh, this parade and festival have impacted Dallas for the LGBT community in a positive way? I think um, this sort of movement and the celebration that happens every year becomes more of a, um, becomes more like a landmark for Texas. Like, you see that, oh, this really big city is supporting the LGBT community, more people are going to keep their eyes on Dallas as like, you know, not only for political reasons, but you know, is this a city that will accept us? Is this a city that will like us? Is this a city that wh where we can feel safe if you're in that community? Or in general, because if you see that they're treating, you know, this community with respect, then other communities will want to be here as well. I feel like that's true in some aspects, but like in other ways, it's not like exactly very welcoming to other communities. Like I know for myself that, yeah, I support this entire LGBT movement. It's, it's good that people are expressing themselves, but there are people who, because these rights are, you know, increasing, there are people who are part of the LGBT community and feel like it's also their right to show that they're against religious groups. So while bringing in LGBT um, community and while it's increasing, it's decreasing the, um, the community that's part of a religion. And I feel that in a way it's backing them away. So I, feel, I, feel, I personally feel like it's either one or the other. Mm -hmm. And that's really bad because I really want to see a community where both oh. can work peacefully, mm -hmm. but there are going to be people in both communities that are going to be like, oh, well, you're wrong and I'm right. So there's really never going to be an equilibrium. And I feel that's really something that we need to work on because even now while the LGBT is rising, um, now it's the religious groups that are feeling oppressed. Yeah, yeah I, I completely agree with you. Um, I think that it's important to be respectful yeah. of both um, because I am on both sides. I do, um, you know, I am religious and I am part of the LGBTQ plus community. And I think it's important to be respectful of each other. And right now, um, some people are like on each side are not being respectful. And we just need to learn to like be okay with each other regardless of our situation. Yeah, I feel like our culture has 
meters of devices against each other where <laughs> one small chunk is just uh, separated. So um, with what you said um, that we need to work on this, do you think the LGBTQ plus community has been normalized in the US? Do you think it's more accepting and more normal to see LGBTQ plus youth walk around or adults? No, definitely not because there are still people who are completely homophobic and that's something that's not exactly good to see because there are people that are completely fighting it. So it's noticeable that the LGBT um, still hasn't been normalized. So I do think that there's still more to be done in order for people to be more accepting of this community. But there, there has been a lot of progress. You know, it used to be where people couldn't express themselves. So I, I can't say that I am proud of what this community has done because it's okay to be able to express oneself even if you don't exactly support it. It's okay because I know that I personally wanted, wouldn't want to be oppressed or shut down on my beliefs, and I wouldn't want that to be infringed on anything else. Gotcha. So um, there's this huge debate that we all I think we all know about. So everyone always asks, why, if there's a straight, a gay pride, why is it not a straight, a straight pride or a straight festival or so hot and so? Um, do you guys feel like that has some type of uh, validity? Can it be backed up, or do you guys feel like it's just nonsense? You know? Well, I think that, it, in my personal opinion, it doesn't have validity for like straight pride because um, I think for a lot of the time it's like um, like Carlos was saying that you know there's Latino pride and there's you know Black pride, there's a Hispanic History Month, a Black History Month. And these are all things that show like we have come through our oppression and we've gone through that, so we're celebrating that. And it's like if like people had a white pride, like that's not it doesn't work like that. We either <laughs> they were never just, oppressed. Yeah, they, they were, were never oppressed. oppressed, so it doesn't work like that. Um, but you know, I think it's the same thing when it comes to like gay pride or like just pride in general. Um, people are able, straight people are able to be themselves regardless of their situation. So yeah, then we don't need a pride. Going hand with what you were saying. Um, when it comes to oppression and, you know, when you see these communities, or especially those communities, they are very oppressed and you don't see, you know, straight people uh, having high suicide rates for mm -hmm. being straight. Yeah. You have more, you know, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender people committing suicide because they don't know how to express themselves mm -hmm. or they don't know what to do when it comes to that. That's the oppression that, you know, shows that, you know, you need things like pride so that people can be proud of who they are. That's yeah. the whole point of it at mm -hmm. the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah I course. completely agree with that. Do um, you have anything to say about that? No, I think I'm, I'm on board with what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, so, um, I don't know, it's so interesting how we like, in the sense we're all so like, in opposite sides, but yeah. I love how we could find a middle ground and come to an understanding with, hey, it's okay to celebrate something. But, um, like I said, there's still many obstacles uh, the LGBT community has to face, and um, we need to show people that we're GN, we're not going to stop fighting for that. Yeah. yeah. And I think pride does that, does just that. It shows that, you know, we're here, we're queer, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> and I think it's a great experience for people to go to, even if you aren't, aren't a part of the LGBTQ plus community, you can go if you're straight or anything like that. Yeah. It's really a great experience. I like what you said there. <laughs> so we'll be right back with more. You don't forget to follow us on uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at KSVMTVT. Also add us on Snapchat at SVM Townview. And don't forget to use the hashtag KSVM. We live. All right, four seconds just to back. <laughs> okay, I'll try. <laughs> Who's next? Are you coming in, right? Oh, so come on, come on, stay back with Okay. Okay. 
Yeah. 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 Ye
of homeless youth are lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. While homeless uh, among all the youth is a greater concern, research indicates that LGBT homeless youth are the far greatest risk of suicide and sexual harassment or assault. So, this is just only one of many examples of displays that Texas lacks for protection of LGBTQ plus students. So, um, uh, do you guys believe that there should be more legal free pr protection for LGBTQ people or in public schools? Legal protection? How would that work? So that being being allowed for trans restrooms or, or gender identity restrooms where you identify for that restroom or whatever. I feel like um, adding a unisex restroom, maybe that would be um, that would be valid, but um, for people being allowed, like transgender people being allowed to go into the other sex's restroom, like a transgender male going into a female's restroom or something like that, um, I don't know how I personally would feel about that. Like, I don't think I would feel comfortable with a transgender going into the restroom that I'm in simply because of the fact that I wouldn't feel not exactly unsafe, because uh, that's not, like I wouldn't feel unsafe, but a little bit out of my comfort zone because of how it used to be like when we were a male before and now we're female. Like I'm not really sure, like, you know, males and females are obviously different. It's in your genes and it's also in the way that you behave. And I feel that some, some of those parts are still going to remain in you even if you change your gender. So I'm not really sure if I would feel exactly welcoming about that. I, I understand that, and I think it's important that you feel safe using the restroom, just as trans people want to feel safe using the restroom. But um, there has been not a single case in like US history that shows that you know there's been like an assault on a person who is cisgender, which just means that you are you correlate with the um, gender that you were assigned at birth. Um, there's no like assault or any like sexual assault or any like abuse that comes with a transgender person going to the restroom that they identify as. And I think it is important that you feel safe, but it's also important that they feel safe. And I do think that it is important to have like gender neutral bathrooms so that, you know, they can all go, even if you don't feel comfortable, they can go to that one. Yeah, I agree with the gender neutral bathroom. I think that would be. I mean, like, if you know something could go wrong, shouldn't you do something to prevent it, you know? Um, yeah, I was I was saying that yesterday, like, yeah, there aren't any cases, but we shouldn't have to wait on that to happen for us to make, be able to prevent it. That same clause could be used for anything, so yeah. that being like, oh, we have, what if we, let's say a country doesn't like this, then let's just bomb them and destroy them. But instead, that's or. more unrealistic, you know, that wouldn't exactly happen. This is something that could happen because there are people out there who have bad intentions. Um... And this is something like within the capability of any person. See, you know, not yeah. anyone can just bomb another country. The, the thing is, um, the funny part for me when it comes to this is that we are barely talking about transgender people in restrooms in 2014, 2015, when there's been so many transgender people before that who have been going to these restrooms who have been not spoken about until we had this huge topic come into the political arena. And now we're definitely all concerned about it, but we weren't concerned when it wasn't spoken about. Cause there was no case, there was no problem. So why are we trying to create a problem when there should not be a problem? There is not a problem. Get me? Mm -hmm. But I mean, there wasn't a problem like to begin with. Like it wasn't like, it wasn't an open door, but now it is an open door. You know, it's more like an accepting matter. And uh, you know, like I said, like now that the doors are wide open, you know, any possibilities can come out of that. The thing is, why is it wide open when there shouldn't be a door? Because there wasn't meant to be a door. Like, there's no reason why we should be scared because it's been going on for a long time and nothing has happened. Yeah, I think it's, people have more fear now that it's more public. Because if you kept it hushed, hushed, no <laughs> one would have said anything about anything. As long as they didn't bring it up or, you know, whatever, then it would be fine. But um, I think it's, I think that it's an okay situation for it to happen. So, like, people can go to the restroom that they want to go to because they have to pee. They can pee. Like, that's, <laughs> that's all they're trying to do. They're not trying to, like, hurt you or anything like that. And I understand that, you know, it can happen regardless. I completely agree. And, you know, those type of people who, who if in the future do that, they are, you know, horrible people who shouldn't be allowed to, like, you know, be with other people because they hurt people. It's not just in general. So like we have to take that into account, like Mauricio was saying that, you know, 
people in any situation can take advantage of what they're having. So like people with guns can take advantage with their guns. It doesn't mean that they're gonna do anything with their guns, but they can do something. So it's, you can take advantage of any situation. Yeah, I feel like when we talk about this restroom uh, problem, it's more so, we just, I don't think it's more of a transgender situation, it's more of a human situation. It's not that you're transgender that you're doing it, it's that you're just a terrible human. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's how I feel like. Yeah. It's it, like that, that also is like, like for example, like see, like the problem doesn't, ha it's not necessarily like, like gays or lesbians, you know, they want to like have, or trans, you know, they want to use the restroom of their choice. It's more of like people that have bad intentions before that, you know? Like, uh, you know, they could be like, oh, this is an open door. Maybe I could just pretend to be this other gender and I go in there and I do like something about it. Mm -hmm. and, and with that, like, yes, it's obvious that that can still happen. You know, any other person can go walk into the girl's restroom, even if they're not disguising themselves as a girl. You know, any guy can go in. Yeah. And it's understandable, you know, it can happen. But this opens a door for people to be like, okay, I'll dress up as a woman, I'll dress up as a man, and just go in and make it seem as it didn't happen. I get that. I, I, I do. Um, but I think that with those type of situations, they're not, you know, they have malintentions and actual trans people just need to use the restroom. So I think it's a little different than that. But I do agree with what you're saying that, you know, people will take advantage of situations and you're going to take that into account. But as I said, like, you can take that into any situation. So like, um, undocumented people, they're seen as, you know, um, terrible people because one person did one bad thing, but that doesn't mean that their whole community should be ashamed, like should be taken away from their human rights, their basic human rights, which is like using the restroom. Wow, nice analogy. <laughs> but, um, so when we talk about restrooms, tell me, we just had our own Pride Week, mm -hmm. which amazing. Yeah. But um, do you guys believe that we're too, putting too much politics in school or putting too much LGBT topics in school? I personally think that it's a little just uh, not too much, but like unfair in a way. Because while you guys are getting rights, you know, um, the let's say, like it used to be back in the 1900s, um, before school started, people were gathered together and prayed. And that was stripped away. That's not something that's being done anymore. Teachers can't talk about religion. But now you guys are fighting for your rights. And you guys are expecting teachers to be able to give lessons about the LGBT community. But we can't really do anything about the religious rights because, you know, it's against some of the people's beliefs. But you guys want everyone to accept, hey, it's okay being gay. It's, it's, and that, it's, it's okay for, like, not just that. It's, like, it's okay to talk about it in class. It's okay for a teacher to talk about that. And I agree. But I also think that it's okay for a teacher to talk about religion, that it's okay for the staff to express their religious beliefs. So that's my personal view on it. Like, I'm, I'm okay with it, but what about the rights of the people? Like, I have the rights to express myself religiously, but what about the teachers? Um, I think that's a great, like, great perspective of it, but I also think that religious is a belief, and being, like, of the LGBTQ plus community is what you are. You can't change that. So then you, you have to go day by day. Like, yeah, it's part like that. of your identity, but so is religion. Religion is a huge part of who I am. Yeah, and me as well. Like, I, I will pray when I want to, and like, with, like if I want to on a day-to-day -day basis, I will pray, but I also want to have basic human rights mm -hmm. and be able to learn in a school So I'm going to play mediator right now and just like, stop because our segment is ending right now. So again, guys, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Sorry. Twitter, or Facebook. <laughs> You're fine. At, under, at KSBM underscore QDT. So yeah, and use the hashtag KSBM we live. So yeah, we'll see you in the next segment. A little bit too early last segment, so we're going to sign away. Alright, sometimes. Alright, you have some. You always have some. I mean, like, first of all. Alright, continue. You have to be in the mic. Wait, so. No, you have to be like in the mic. Like, go. And I'm back. You don't have to, like, just ask her questions. I, yeah. Okay. Ask questions, but not the whole thing. really ask weird. Questions. Like, I could barely speak. Because it was sounding really huh, weird. Is it? Yeah, one of the, uh, I hate the sound of my voice. Yeah, because like, I, all I could, I couldn't hear any of the else's voice like, except my own, and it was, so like, really loud. So, I was, uh, yes. okay. so, so I'm not going to, um, like, I mean, I put one out, because, like, I was trying to, like, one minute. Parents are with me, so it's like, okay. It's 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 okay.
Okay. Is the question anyone could the questions are anyone could ask like you could ask. Okay, okay. so I'm gonna ask the first question and then we should go off from there, right? Okay, okay. put it on the side so I can see it coming. Uh question the password, so it's a little slow and It is. So, hey guys, it's KC and Ledo, and we're back with a new segment, right? Okay. So, I'm Eliza, and my co hosts are Ledo, right? And I'm a solution script and then Okay. Oh, oh. Hey. Oh. hey guys, this is KSB and Radio, the voice of Townview. I'm T. And I'm Eliza. And I'm Breezy. And we are here with a special guest, a teacher here at the school. You can introduce yourself. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Simpson. Okay, and during this segment, we're going to be talking about parents and allies. So basically, this segment is about love, equality, and unity. This segment will be speaking about parents and the importance of allies for the LGBTQ plus community. We would like to welcome our honorable guest, Miss Simpson. Not only does she teach English here at Townview, but she also has an amazing record of helping the LGBT community as she is a sponsor for the GSA Gay Straight Alliance at the school. And it's an honor to have you here at the show, and without further ado, we'd like to start this interview. So my first question for you is, what's your personal involvement and connection to the LGBT community? Well, like you said, I am the sponsor for GSA. Um, I've been at, at other schools too, and I have friends who qualify for one of those initials, and a couple of them. <laughs> and I just, you know, they're my friends, and so I, Okay, and following that, do you believe, like, as a person, as an ally, that it's important to have other allies within the LGBT community? I do. I think, like, everybody needs an ally of some sort. You know, somebody to tell you that you're not a weirdo and you're not, you know, an outsider and that you're loved and that you have a right to be who you are, regardless of your gender identity or anything. So what do you feel is our goal as allies to, like what should we do in support of the LGBTQ community? Um, well, like I said, just be there for your friends because they are going through things that we don't understand as straight people. We don't know what they're going through. We don't know what kind of animosity that they get from others. So. If we could just be there for them to, if nothing else, give them to, someone to vent to. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, to, again, to reassure them that they have a right to be who they are, they have a right to exist in this world. So. Um, and could you speak a little bit more about your personal involvement? Do you, I've heard that you have um, your son is in the LGBT. <laughs> um, yeah, my, my son came out to me uh, four years ago when he went away to college and he called me on coming out day. I didn't know there was such a thing, but he came out on coming out day. And um, so we're on the phone when it happened and I was like, Tweety, I've known this since you were six years old. I don't know why you're, what you're telling me that I don't already know. But, um, but it was new to him because <laughs> he didn't realize it until that time. Um, so, like I said, I, his mom and He's engaged now, which I'm very happy about, because he's with the same guy that he was four years ago, so that's something. <laughs> um, and like I said, I have quite a few friends who are gay. I have one friend who's transgender. Um, uh, the, f the friends that I have who are gay are actually parents of my daughter's classmates. And so we see each other just, you know, like school events and things like that. People. <laughs> and was there ever, did you feel like there was ever any conflict or cultural stigma about um, being an ally or um, being in support of it? Did you ever feel like people looked at you differently because of that? Um, 
a little bit. I have felt it, not so much here at Town View, I haven't felt it yet. I haven't been sponsored very long, but at my other school, I did feel like people became a little standoffish when they found out that I was sponsored for PSA. Um, I don't know, I think people just have this mindset of what gay is, and it's, um, it doesn't help with movies and TVs <laughs> that make it so crazy. Because, you know, mostly they're just people. And Wendy, what's your take on it? Because I know you <laughs> have a different uh, point of view than <laughs> some of us at the table. <laughs> to pursue happiness, and this is who they are. Um, but as I was saying before, like on the last segment, there's also the part about like religion. You know, the LGBT community want the right to talk about who they are, and because this is you know their identity, their, 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 their um, that's, that's who they are. But um, and it, it should be right. It should be okay for them to express themselves at school, and it should even be okay for a teacher to express her, her point of view on the subject, but then there's also like religion. It's also a big part of who a person is. It's a huge part in, of who I am, and it's not just a belief to me, it's who I am, and I feel like just as the LGBT should have rights, I feel like religious groups should have rights because, you know, today um, teachers can't express themselves religiously. They can't say, oh, I believe in God, because students automatically think, oh my gosh, you're trying to put this on me. And that's also like the same view with the LGBT, like there are straight kids who think, oh, why are you trying to push this on me? So I think that we still, like the world as a whole still has a lot of work to do to find that equilibrium where we can both be equal, because so far it's like one or the other. And so you would be happy if there was like um, a meeting like you were allowed to talk about um, your sexuality, but as well as your religious beliefs? Yeah, because like I'm here at the school, I feel like the LGBT has reached a point where they feel, like it's awesome to feel proudful of who you are, it's awesome. But like they've reached a level where they don't just feel pride, but some of them, not all of them, I don't like generalizing people, because I know that there are people who generalize the Christian community, and they say, oh, all of you guys are hypocrites, oh, all of you guys are doing this while saying that. That's not everyone. And I know that it's not everyone where we talk about the LGBT, but there are people, like it's been done to me. I talk, I say one thing about God and they automatically start laughing. It happened to me yesterday and it hurts. And I know that it hurts the LGBT community whenever we say something, not just me, I know, but like I'm talking about the straight people. Like I know that it hurts whenever people laugh at them. And so I, I've always felt like it's either one or the other and that's not okay. And um, Ms. Simpson, in your class, would you, I mean, because um, I actually had your class, and so I know that there was a certain topic that may have um, sparked a bit of controversy, especially since we talked about uh, Macklemore's Same Love video. Mm -hmm. And I mean, of course I enjoyed it, but um, I've actually always been pretty open-minded. Did you ever feel any um, tension because of that lesson or after that lesson? I did have a parent who was very upset. They said that um, I offended their, I insulted their religion because of my acceptance of my son, which I, I, quite honestly, I don't understand how what happens at my house affects your house, but. Um, and, and I, I hear what Wendy's saying, I do, and I, we need to find some kind of common, common space, you know, that where we can all be, and because um, I don't think that gay people are anti-God by any means. Um, yeah, there are people who are gay and do go to church, or people right, are yeah. gay and believe in God and have yeah. a strong faith. Right. Um, my son is quite religious, actually, which surprises me because I've never been really religious. <laughs> um, but I just, I don't know, it's, like I said, we need to find a common space, and I know that given our political arena right now, 
it feels like we are heading in the, in the opposite direction where um, antagonism is the word of the day. And we really work to, or we relish the conflict. And that's not good for anybody. So what can we do to make a better and more safe environment um, in our schools and our communities? What do you think is something that we have to change about ourselves or for um, what we do? <laughs> I think that part of it is kind of towards what Lindy was saying is that we just we need to find a safe space, to use the cliche word, to be somewhere where we can all exist and be who we are. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that is all the time that we have to for this segment. And so it was an honor to have you on the show today and to talk about you know your personal experience as an ally with your son in the LGBT community. And words cannot describe how much love we have for you know just having you here. And so if you guys could follow us at KSBM um, underscore TVT on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and then also add us on SBM Town View on Snapchat. And make sure you guys use the hashtags, hashtag KSBM We Live, hashtag SBM Family Matters, and hashtag SBM Town View when you talk to us. Wow. Okay. Ooh, I did that. <laughs> what? I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a pen. I did not expect to be leading that, because like, when it was silent, yeah. I was like, okay, next question. Yeah, that was interesting. That was an art that comes from I didn't get to ask you, like, I had so many, like, you had so many good questions. I feel like I didn't, like, touch all of them. Like, yeah, we didn't get very far on our list, did yeah. we? Well, <laughs> I kind of, like, I looked at it, and then I, like, changed it up for, like, the conversation. But, oh, that's yeah. mine. Okay. Oh, okay. Am I still on here? Okay. Am I still on here? Thank you for thank coming. You for thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank 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 you. She was like. <laughs> she was like. Yeah, she was like. Oh, she went to France. Like as soon as she said France, I was like, oh, was you gonna keep her? Just I don't know. Like, I think all these But she's kind of uncomfortable after she started talking about it. Oh yeah, the history, right? Yeah. You know the I, history. I have yeah, I have like facts oh. and stuff. Uh, oh, I'm well, gonna tell her. I can't prepare. Here, come on. Let's let you know, guys. You know what I mean? No, yeah. Oh, who, who was one that didn't know anything? Well, I mean, what I was she saying knows, is because we need to opposition. For a fact, and we need to, you know, wait. Two days. <laughs> two days. <laughs> Ryan, you can see a whole second. I mean, what are you supposed to know? <laughs> so, you, do, you, do, you know about, do you know about the fact? Because if you know about the segment, then you're going to have, you're going to, because the yeah, point I'm of not this too, is for moderating. I think I'm just going to drop out because I don't know too what much about the Kavanaugh sprinkle. Yeah, what if you, you should just come in because I'm not too familiar with the Kavanaugh. So, yeah. That sounds more, that's more. Can I like I pull you. one ear in and one out? Cause like I can. It's, and you're I like so actually confused. like I like it. cause like you create the dialogue that like, I love talking about because it makes you like actually think. <laughs> Instead of just saying it's that. that. It's not that. Exactly, and you make it like. I have no idea what this cable is. Just, like, just drop it. Yeah, like literally, I have a cable that's nothing there. Ten minutes for the segment. What's that? Ten minutes for the segment. Yeah. Okay, I'm um, gonna start it off and I'll. I'll be in charge of the outro. Okay. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna need you to like move your big head. Oh. You. Oh, I didn't get the point. Pay attention. <laughs> hey guys, we're back. Case being radio, the voice of town view. Guys, that was a really good interview. I round of applause for the people who were there. That was an amazing interview. It, it actually just opened a lot of dialogue for where we're coming up for this segment, which is all about LGBT awareness and political engagement. So, um, so guys, do you think the community has been politicized too much? Um, in my opinion, 
I, I don't really think it's been politicized that much. Um, when you think about the LGBT uh, community, like, this is all just about advocating for like people's rights and just try, not trying to create like this disparity and this all this uh, you know scrutiny for people who just like have find themselves in a like you know a whole different like perspective. And so for me, I just feel like you know this is your life. You know you, this is you know whatever you choose to be. So I don't try to discriminate against anybody um, as far as you know being politicized. Um, yeah, we've seen like an increase in things that we see on like television and awareness and stuff. But at the end of the day. This is all just about helping our community. I think that, I, I must say, I kind of disagree with you. Um, I think it is politicized. I think that if, you know, you see on both sides of the aisle, they have different opinions. And this is an issue that shouldn't be politicized, but it unfortunately is. You know, you have uh, the right-wing people saying, you know, this is wrong, this is immoral, because we are, you know, because, you know, it has to do with religion. And then you have the left side that says, well, you know, these are people's rights. These are people's human rights. And, you know, and I don't want to say that it's become too politicized. It's just become politicized. I guess right now everything is just, it's work, it's working out and we're still trying to figure out how, you know, like in the last section, how straight people can, how we can like help the LGBTQ community as well. And, but some people don't want to, focus on that. Some people don't want to think of that. They just want to think of like what's right and the eyes of God or without thinking of what they, what the people who are in this community feel. I agree with you um, in, to a certain extent. Um, I think that it has had, you know, it has become more politicized, but I think for a good reason because with politics, they fight for human rights. I know that there's sides, but like, you know, they're in the Senate, they're sides and everything like, but the bills are not cited. It's the right for a person. So like with DACA, like it was like a human right. They had the human right to be here in this country and work. And I know people on each side don't want to participate in that, but it's a human right just as like LGBT people have human basic, basic human rights. Um, so when we talk about politics, you have to have a source of uh, problem to become politicized. Do you guys believe that the LGBT plus community has been, uh, is still oppressed or still has things going on that need to be fixed? Um, I'd say definitely. Have they been oppressed? I would say yes, you know, because in the past years we've had like unfortunate events and crimes against you know, the LGBT community. And at the end of the day, it's unfortunate because, you know, like I said, people are just trying to live their lives and just trying to, you know, uh, take, take the course of the, their life, you know, each and every day, the, the way that they say, uh, see fit. Um, but as far as the oppression, you know, there's a lot of us who kind of just, we're like kind of one-minded when it comes to this matter. We're like, all right, boom, this is the eyes of God. And here in America, you have to be just, you know, straight. You have to be, uh, your or uh, sexual orientation has to be a certain way. And if you don't, you know, if it's not aligned with our perspective, then it's like we have a whole total, total issue. But you have to think about the whole like principles of why America was founded and the Constitution and all the different things, you know, freedom of speech and just, uh, just autonomy in general. So, um, their oppression, you know, it's been an unfortunate event, but what would you guys say about it? I think the LGBT community is still suppressed because, um, you see, like, you even mentioned they're still being attacked. Like, for instance, a few years ago in Orlando, Orlando when they yeah, uh, yeah. shut off the nightclub. Yeah. Um, and you still see people being afraid of, you know, being who they are. Like, like for instance, I mentioned earlier that um, they still have, you know, a really high suicide rate, and that's mm -hmm. not all yes. right. They're suppressed because of who they are. And then on top of that, you know, it's, um, it becomes a little, be or, well, let me put it this way. If they weren't suppressed, it would, it would be much easier for people to come out. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree. And to add on that, like, the, there, there's still a lot of a way to go and like, people are like, oh, well they have their basic rights. They have like, they can live now, which is, is you know, basic. <laughs> that's, basic. you know, that's not a basic human right. That's like, you know, bare minimum. And like for trans women of color, you know, their life expectancy is 31. Like, think about that. You know, you think, you see that and you're like, how is that possible? Yeah. But that's because of oppression and bias and like discrimination and all these type of people who are like, they don't deserve, you know, basic human rights. They don't even deserve the bare minimum. 
and that's not you know a right thing to do it's just you know trust me i know about that <laughs> um so when we talk about politics so kavanaugh he's right now being interviewed and been going through this whole justice supreme choice trial yep yep mm -hmm. um do you think Kavanaugh's election as a Supreme Justice could be a threat to the LGBTQ plus community? Mm, do I think it would be a threat? Um, if you, you've listened to like his uh, interviews and things that he said at the podium, you can kind of hear like his orientation about the whole situation. I'd say yeah, it's a threat only because like Harry Boone, he's one of those individuals like I was mentioning earlier, where they kind of want to limit, like you said, those mm -hmm. basic rights, like make basic rights even more basic. So, yeah, he's not really doing, he's not really doing a good job for us. Well, I think that, I think it's not such a threat as maybe others think are a threat. Or you think, for instance, you know, Brett Kavanaugh, he's more interested in things like women's, like, Wars, like, 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 yeah. the, like if women should, violence. could have, <laughs> are allowed to abort or not. And um, I don't feel like maybe Brett Kavanaugh is that interested in the LGBTQ community. It's probably like a side issue for him. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can see that, but it's, it's also bad being a side issue because it is very, you know, important now more than ever to have human rights and like other rights other than just like the bare minimum. And I think um, it could be a threat because um, he, he hasn't spoken like like out about the LGBTQ plus movement, he hasn't said anything like negative or positive. But being silent is, you know, Same just as bad as yeah. doing not like, you know, not helping or you know being on the opposition. And he also um, does disagrees with the Affordable Care Act, which also um, you know helps a lot of LGBTQ yes. plus youth and homeless people, you know, have basic rights to like. Um, HIV treatment and other things, other medical um, ailments that affect the LGBTQ plus um, community a lot. Um, I, I totally agree with you. Um, so you said that it's not his focus. Uh, I'll give you Trump, like just a little example. Trump really didn't focus on the LGBTQ plus community. He never spoke about during it. During his campaign. Yeah, during his campaign. Once he was elected, boom, a trans ban on military. You can't be trans if you go into the military. So I feel like there's there's that thing where he's silent, but silence isn't good. It's bad. It will always be bad when it comes to politics, because we need to know what's going on. He's a threat to marriage equality, the Care Act, the Affordable Care Act, and a lot of other uh, issues that would affect trans or just any other youth or LGBT community member. So um, again, on that, um, do you think history can repeat itself if he gets elected? Who are you, uh, Kavanaugh? Kavanaugh, yes. Kavanaugh. <laughs> Coming out, um, like like uh, Bread and Water was saying, uh, it's not necessarily his primary uh, like focus at the moment. I think probably in due time in the future he'll probably have like come in contact with it. And history might not necessarily repeat itself, but you'll see something quite similar to like things that we've had in the past. And you do, you never want to have like any more violent outbreaks or anything come across any group of people. Because hate is hate in general, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, let's talk about culture wise. Is this a moral issue or is it a human right issue? So, when we talk about LGBTQ plus community, is this something that we morally speak upon or as a human right we speak upon that way? Can I say it's a little bit of both? Yeah. I would say it's, it's just a mixture between like morality. Like what we think is right and what we think is wrong, obviously, and then also as far as like human rights, like what you know the individual uh, and American citizens like what should be like their the correct way of living. But at the end of the day, like I said, our foundation was based upon freedom, so it's not necessarily like boom. If you don't, if you're not straight, then you're a horrible person. If you're not Christian, you already got all that extra crap. But at the end of the day, uh, as far as like morality goes, I just feel like. If you kind of view somebody who's in the LGBT community as just like um, a horrible person, just based off of like their sexual orientation, just like that, then that's really you know biased to view. That's really biased to view to just you know come across somebody because just like you know with uh, African Americans and slavery back in the day, you know discrimination yeah. based off of such limited limited information. So I know that we're really going to be going on and off about this. And I know it's gonna be such a 
tough issue, and you know, but we'll see where this goes, and we'll see how Brett Kavanaugh's decision. That's if he gets accept. That's mm -hmm. if he gets elected. Yeah. Put in. <laughs> how will? I just no, you know it's just a little tough sometimes, but we need to talk about next week's no well, next time show. Yeah. So next time we have a show about college. And we will be talking to you guys about what opportunities we can get, how to manage your way through college, and even before college. Oh, I'm sweating already. <laughs> <laughs> when you just speak about college, it's a panic for me. Yeah, I mean, it is already college season. <laughs> yes, so what are we going to talk about that uh, episode? I'm sorry? What are we going to talk about upon our episode? Um, we're actually also going to have our uh, college, uh, our college advisor as well there oh, to ooh. talk to ooh. us and to give you guys more information about what opportunities we can find ourselves into. Didn't we get a new one? I think we did. Yeah. Hey, get it. <laughs> so this is a good chance for everybody to get to know him and for us to become more familiar with this entire college process because it can be pretty stressful. I know for a fact. Like, let me just say this. I, um, I've been applying for uh, the early decision one. So like, it gets exhausting trying to figure out like what to put, what to say. And I don't... I'm not necessarily sure what to do when it comes to that, but mm -hmm. with this segment, I feel like maybe we will all get a better idea of what is in store. Absolutely. So, guys, um, when it comes to college, are you guys, um, is there a feeling of excitement more so, or is it a feeling of just fear or anxiety? I think it's like fear and anxiety and excitement, like a whole combination of that, because like, I know, like, I'm trying to, like, write one college essay to make it, like, really nice, but, like, <laughs> it's a terrifying experience because I don't know what I'm, you know, trying to put or, like, if I should put this or if I should put that. Yeah. And, like, I have, like, my college advisor, like, say one thing about it, and I'm like, I don't know if that's right or the other thing's right yeah. or wrong. Yeah. Thank you, Olive, for being here with us and for talking to us about all of this. And now, uh, as before we get ready to go, let's say our names one more time so that people get a better idea of who we are for next time. It's your boy, Bread and Water. I'm Ari. I'm Ale. And it's your main man, Coach. Signing off. Signing off. Oh, don't forget to follow us on KSVM underscore TVT, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We'll see you. You're so sweet. Huh? You're so sweet.